Hey guys, uh, in the previous videos, I think six or so videos, we we're doing forces and I've just ticked it off because we have finished, we finished discussing forces. Now we're moving on to the next section, um, circular motion. So without wasting time, let's get into that. <coughs> right. Circular motion. As the name suggests, we are now considering motion that is... Um, motion in a circle, motion in a circle. In, in, in the previous videos when we talked about forces, all of the, all of the examples that I was putting, the inclined plane, the, 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 the book on a table, those were, those were all sort of examples of motion in a straight line because it was just moving in a straight line. But now we are considering motion in a circle. So let's, 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 let's take a look at an object that is moving in a circle let the center be O. Let the center be O. And let's say, let's say at time T the object is at point A. Then after some time, after the, the, some, some time the object is now at point B. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. The object was initially at A, but since it's moving in a, in a circle, this is the path, the, the path, the circular path. The center is O. It was at A at time, let's say time zero. Then after time delta T, it moved to point B. Um, so let this object move with uniform speed. Now this is one thing I'm going to emphasize. I'm saying uniform speed. Uniform speed, it means the magnitude is constant, but the direction is is, is changing because this is a circle. So this object is accelerating because acceleration, okay, let me start that again. Uniform speed, we know velocity. Velocity is a vector. It has both magnitude, it has both magnitude and direction. Whenever velocity changes, we know there is acceleration, isn't it? Whenever velocity changes, there is acceleration. So if any one of these factors that make up velocity changes, then there is acceleration, right? Here I'm considering an object that is moving around in a circle at uniform speed, which means this magnitude is constant. This is equal to constant. But the direction is changing because obviously in a circle the direction has to change. Here it was due east and here it is now sort of like northeast. At this point here it will be due north, at this point due west. So the direction is ever changing. So since one of the factors is changing, velocity is also changing, which means there is acceleration. We're going to get into that when we talk about acceleration in, in, um, in circular motion. The first part that we want to discuss is angular velocity. Angular velocity. We're going to consider this, 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 this path here that we, that we thought about. So we are considering uniform, uniform speed and the direction changing due to the what? to the circular motion around fixed point O. When the object moves from moves from A to B along the arc AB, can you see there's an arc AB? The object is going to move along this arc AB. The radius OA moves through an angle theta. As this object is moving along this arc, this radius is moving through an angle theta. It's going to sweep through an angle theta in the same time that the object takes to move from A to B. So in that case, let's define, let's have a definition. We're going to define angular displacement. Angular displacement, angular displace, displacement, it is equal to theta. Let angular displacement be theta or the angle that, that this object is going through or the angle, the radius, the radius is going through in that time t. So this is going to be angular displacement and it is measured in radians. So this angle here that the radius is going through in that time, this angle is called angular displacement and it's measured in units called radians. Or for short, it's rad. It's just given RAD, RAD, that is the short for radians. So that is what, that is our angular displacement. And, and by convention, or not convention, by rather by, by, by geometrical calculations, by geometrical calculations and using a bit of mathematics, a full circle, a full revolution. We know in degrees full revolution. 
in degrees this is equal to 360 degrees but in radians it is equal to 2 pi radians so by so a full revolution a full revolution if the radius travels from a from oa and then goes around like this back to the same point a full, full revolution that is equal to an angle of 2 pi radians so if that is equal to an angle of 2 pi radians we are going to we're going to now calculate what the angular velocity since velocity is generally defined as the change of displacement per unit time we're going to have our angular velocity angular velocity therefore is defined as the change of displacement change of displacement over change in time so change of displacement over change in time it gives us angular velocity but the displacement that we are going to consider are not meters as an, an object moving from point A to B on a straight line if it was an, on a straight line we are going to we are going to say maybe 5 meters but we are not going to consider 5 meters because it's not a straight line we are going to consider the angular displacement that we have just defined here so the change in displacement will be equal to the change in displacement over the change in time so angular velocity is equal to change in displacement over change in time and angular velocity let me let me let me let me remove that part because it might get confusing this is for a straight line so let's just it was just to explain the five meters okay angular display angular velocity is is uh, denoted by a letter a Greek letter that looks like a W like this I think it's Omega It's a small small letter Omega if I'm not mistaken so angular velocity is equal to change of the angular displacement over time and in calculus notation in calculus notation notation angular velocity is equal to d theta over dt rate of change of displacement over rate of change of angular displacement over time or with respect to time in calculus in calculus notation so but for simplicity for simplicity we can just call this equal to theta over t theta over t that is just to to to, to make the calculation simple so our so our angular velocity is equal to theta over t or angular displacement over time the units when we, when we look at this when we're doing a bit of dimensional analysis when you look at this this is measured in radians this is measured in seconds so angular velocity is measured in a un, in radians per second that is the that is the the unit of of angular velocity for for a straight line velocity the the the, the, the units are meters per second so let's see the other part now that will that will be that we'll be talking about now. now. Mm. So now, now, now we are going to go uh, come across another definition. The definition is, is we are going to go see, define something called the period. The period. You know, for, for for this object that is going going round in a circle like this, it's going to take some time for it to come back to a. If it leaves a at time t equal to zero. It's going to take some time for it to come back to, to, to that same point where it was to, to, to make a full revolution. Time t to describe the circle once, to describe the full circle once, is known as the period. So period is the time for it to make a full revolution. So time, time to make a full revolution. That is what is called. That is what is called a period. Time to make a full revolution or a full circle. So now let's look at how to, how to calculate it. We know that our W is equal to theta over T. Therefore, our T is equal to theta over W, right? That is equal to t, uh, theta over W just by what? Making T the subject of the formula. But now we know something. There's something that we are going to notice here. The time, the time that we are considering is not just time. We are considering a special type of time, if I may say. We are considering a time called period. So this T we are going to represent it by what represents period. Period is usually represented by a capital letter T. Therefore, this period occurs when what? When theta. What is the angular displacement now? Because now we are putting we are putting symbols where we are replacing these symbols by things that we know. The time that we are considering is called the period. So we are just going to say period is equal to 
but theta, the angular displacement, what is the angular displacement when it comes to period? Period happens in a f when an object goes through a full circle. So we already know the period. We already know the, the, the angular displacement. It's the full circle displacement. And the full circle displacement is equal to the, to the, f the full revolution and displacement, which is equal to 2 pi. Because in a full circle, this object, this radius, goes through an angle of 2 pi. It goes through an angle of 2 pi for it to what? To come back to the same point. And since we are considering a point where, where time is period, period being it going through the full circle, it means we have gone through an, an angle of what? An angular displacement of 2 pi. So this, this theta becomes 2 pi. And then angular velocity will just be the velocity that it's moving at. So the period will be 2 pi over w. That is a formula to calculate period. And it depends on the angular uh, angular velocity. If it's if it's if it is a high angular velocity, then definitely it's not going to take time for it to come back to a. So this period, can, as you can see, it's inversely proportional to the angular velocity. So as angular velocity increases, the period um, decreases, and it makes intuitive intuitive sense. So this is a very important formula to calculate to calculate um, angular to calculate period using angular velocity. Now we are going to do a bit of a bit of um, geometry. Now, if the length of arc AB, let me draw the, the the circle again. This is the center O A, and this is B, and then move to B in time t. This angle is equal to theta. The angle is equal to theta, and this is the arc that we are considering. Let 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 the length of arc length. A B length of arc A B B S. We're going to let the length of, length of arc A B be equal to S. Then, by definition of angle in radians, now this is the definition of angle in radians. Theta will be equal to S over R. This is this is this is how you define theta when it comes to when it comes to radians, not in degrees. When you are talking about radians, this is how you define theta. This angle theta will be equal to the arc length that it's subtending. It's subtending an arc length of S. Because here it's S, and then this will be the radius. So theta will be equal to S over R. And obviously it increases as S increases, the arc length increases, then theta increases as well, directly proportional like this. So this is what? This is the definition of theta. Therefore theta is got S over R. So... S will be equal to R theta when theta is measured in radians. That is very, very important. Theta is not in degrees, it's in radians. So S is equal to R theta. That's another important formula when it comes to circular motion. Then let's let's let, let's use two the, these two the, two form let, let's okay let's 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 derive another formula. Using this one here, let's divide both sides by T. If we're going to divide both sides by t, since we're dividing both sides by t, we are not changing anything, right? So this divided by t, this divided by t. This one, s, s, s divided by t, is going to be. Can you see s? S is in meters because we know we, we arc length will be measured in meters. Maybe this is two meters, three meters. I do not know. So this one will be meters, and time is in seconds. So this is meters per second. Meters per second are units for what? The units for velocity. So this part here is equal to V. This idea is equal to V because this is meters per second. So meters per second measure what? Measure velocity. So we are going to represent our velocity as V. So V is equal to. But what is theta over T? Because this one can be separated as R factor of theta over T. But theta over T, we already know what theta over T is from here. Theta over t is equal to the angular velocity. So this part here will be r multiplied by the angular velocity, like this. So that is the other that is the other formula that is that is important in 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 circular motion. In I think these are the basic for what for angular velocity and velocity. These are the very important formula that we that we will be that we will be useful as we try now as we go to the to the examples not now but when we start our examples we'll be making use of this formula plus the ones that we're going to add in the next video as we consider um, centripetal acceleration so stay tuned for that one